Thank you very much, Malati, for that. And um, hello, ladies and gentlemen. It's good to see so many people here just before lunch. Um, I will try to keep this brief, as I'm sure everybody is feeling uh, hungry and ready for some food. Uh, I'm going to be talking about coordinating European Patent Office oppositions with national revocation actions. Um, Jenny's already covered quite a lot of the procedural aspects of the European Patent Office opposition procedure. I'm going to look at a few of the advantages and disadvantages of it um, and how in particular some of the disadvantages uh, may be cured by um, running parallel uh, national revocation actions. Um, as Malati said, I'm a, a UK practitioner, so this is unashamedly um, quite UK focused. Um, and I apologise for that for those of you um, from other European countries. Quite possibly much of what I'm saying will not apply to the court procedures in your country. Um, also, it's quite pharma-based, um, that being my background, but I don't see why many of the principles cannot apply across other fields of technology as well. So yes, I'm going to cover some advantages and disadvantages of the EPA opposition procedure and then look briefly at the alternative in the UK courts and how some of the features of those, um, those uh, actions can actually help you with your EPA opposition. I'm then going to look at a couple of case studies um, which I've been involved with um, and a few practical tips that may help you when planning um, how to get rid of a European patent that you do not like. So um, I'm not going to talk about this slide in too much detail. It, it mainly covers subject matter that Jenny is...